We're back on 365 Sports, and of course, last week, a lot of the news late in the week when the Big 12 announced the early exit agreement with Texas and Oklahoma. Dr. Lauren Skubadek, Texas Tech president, also the board chairman of the Big 12, joins us here on 365 Sports with Paul Craig, and I'm David Smoke. Doctor, thank you very much for your time. What did, uh, when the agreement was reached, and everyone kind of felt like maybe one was coming, although there's ups and downs with that. Was there a sense of we now know there's a timeline, a deadline, a time frame, and a little bit of relief? Yes. Um, well, David, I have to admit something up front. Um, you talking? Yeah, we're here. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I thought we were going to talk about the fact that our basketball team could be two ranked teams in three days. <laughs> <laughs> we will get to that. We, <laughs> and thank God they okay. did because they needed it. Yeah. Yeah, that's you know there you are. You just beat a number twelve and a number six, and uh, you're three and ten in the conference. It says what kind of conference we have. Um, but back to your question, um, uh, Brett Yormark, our commissioner, began to work on this months ago from different angles, and um, Brett did a fabulous job. Uh, he, he would say that this is one of the most complicated deals he's ever done because you had two conferences you had two tv partners and then you had all these institutions and uh, you're talking about a guy who um, oversaw the move of the new jersey net to brooklyn and uh, you know the building of the barclay sports and entertainment center there so he's been in this arena and um he and he said this was very complicated. Um, we wanted to get this past us. Um, uh, I think, um, you know, Oklahoma and Texas had said they would play through 24, 25, but it's all awkward. Um, we kind of liken this to the movie, The War of Roses, you know, where they stayed together once they announced their divorce. And it just, it, we were good partners, but it, it, it's best that we, we know what our future holds. And so um, I think this was a deal that was fair to everybody. Um, Brett's relationship with Fox and ESPN was a big part of being able to get this done. Everybody gave a little. Uh, and um, he can now spend his time on things that are really important for the future of the conference. Um, you'll start to see maybe some refreshment of our brand. Um, Brett's looking at ways to enhance revenue streams to the conference. And now we know where we stand and uh, we can start to really benefit from his expertise in those ways. With the conference moving forward and the potential for expansion in the future, how do you see that as a possibility now that these other things are out of the way? And from Texas Tech's perspective, what, what benefits Texas Tech when it comes to adding other teams to the conference? Um, obviously expansion is, is something we're going to be talking about. Um, and there's, and you've read of some of the discussions that are going on. Um, uh, we, we had a board, uh, meeting of the board uh, this week and, uh, Brett kind of reviewed where we are and things we might be doing. Um, so, uh, I, I think Brett, uh, recognizes that basketball is probably uh, undervalued. We uh, it, it's worth a lot more than we're getting from it right now. And so you've seen the conversation about the Zaga. There's no decisions made there, but obviously you've, that's been in the news. Um, I think the the conference wants to move forward uh, cautiously, but take advantage of Brett's uh, ability to find a new opportunity. Um, you know, it, it's hard to say what's going to happen with the Pac-12. They just, I think, this week reaffirmed their commitment to one another. So I don't know how that might influence those discussions. But those, those possibilities are being looked into. It would be presumptuous of me to start saying what, what, what could happen. As for Texas Tech, we like the fact that we're in a conference that just got a new TV deal. And, and you know, uh, that was the first thing Brett did. Uh, uh, 
we got more money per institution with the 12 than we did with the 10. And when you lose schools of the marquee value of Oklahoma and Texas, that says a lot. And, um, and now we have clarity about where our future is with regard to the OU and Texas leaving. And that gives, him, that gives us, I think, more leeway to plan for expansion. Um, as far as tech is concerned, to get back to the point, we like the fact that we're in a very solid conference, the best basketball conference in the United States, and um, a darn good conference and everything else. How smart in hindsight, even though there's still a lot to be played out, but uh, how much does everybody now reflect on the decision to go ahead and, and talk TV deal a little bit earlier than was expected or scheduled? I mean, given some of the headlines that are out there right now, how, how is everybody in the conference feeling about the decision to, to jump out early and grab a TV deal? Um, yeah, that's a very important point. We feel very good about that. Um, you know, when you bring in new members, as we did, everybody does have to uh, deal with the effect of the dilution of spreading that pie out among four new members. But once we get into the 25-26 season with that new TV deal, we'll be ahead of where we were with our current contract. So uh, that is that, that's very important to us. It gives us a lot of financial stability. And Brett's going to be looking for other revenue streams. Um, I think if you look at where the Big 12 is with regard to their, their TV deal and you look at the situation the Pac-12 is still dealing with, and of course I'm not privy to the details there, I like our position. Um, and I, I still think there's more uh, to be discovered there. You know, the, the deal that we have does allow for some um, pro rata expansion possibilities. So if we bring in new members, um, uh, ESPN uh, as a partner is willing to contribute towards that distribution. So it gives us, I think, uh, more strength in terms of expansion possibilities beyond the fact that we we're in a, uh, we, we have some uh, you know, solidity about what, where we are. We understand it's not the same deal that the Big Ten just struck, but it's we're solidly in, in the third best position among the power five. Dr. Skubadek, do you uh, when you mention the pro data or the if you add one team, you get X amount. Is that what would be, for example, the average number that teams are getting with the newer deal when that kicks in in a year? Yeah. Uh, is that yeah. like, for example, if it's thirty? that if you add a team, they get 30 in, in the ESPN and whoever else is committed to that number, 35, yes. 40, 50, whatever? Yeah, that, that's the basic I, uh, I, idea, David. Um, now, this uh, that involves our relationship with Fox, which, and, 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 excuse me, with ESPN. So it wouldn't be a complete uh, a distrib a distribution uh, you know, match, but... I'm sure Brett would go back with her other partner, Fox, and, and work on that. But it, it's, it's, uh, ESPN is the bulk, of our, the bulk of our deal, and so that pro rata clause does give us some flexibility to consider expansion where there would be a minimal impact upon the existing members. When the Texas OU story popped a couple of summers ago, and also last summer it was UCLA and USC, but when that popped a couple of years ago, what were some of the scenarios that went through your mind? And it was, those were, uh, you know, those were not good days. Um, <laughs> um, my friends have heard this story. I had just become the chair of the board, and I went home, and my wife said to me, it didn't take you long to screw this up. And uh, uh, we have to give credit to Bob Bowlesby for – uh, the deal, he, the work he did to bring in these four new members. We got four great schools. I think everybody sees it. Um, and acting as we did, I think, uh, was important in negotiating a new TV deal. And so uh, getting those schools in early as we did, I think, was a very smart deal. Uh, of course, uh, at, in, at Texas Tech, we love playing Texas. Um, and that's important to us. And so we're going to miss, you know, a regular rivalry with those schools. 
but it doesn't diminish how we, we feel about our new members. But but those were challenging times. And if you think back to the Big 12 then, obviously people were commi- main, making statements, were committed to one another, but we didn't really know what the future held. The, port, the important point is we stuck together, and that's what enabled us to go ahead and move forward and get those four schools. Do you think that your fan base in the last couple of years, the way that – they travel on the road the way that the home atmosphere is, whatever sport it is, has kind of announced to the world that, uh, look, no matter what you, you can say about Lubbock, Texas, and, and all that, we're going to show up and you're going to have a packed house. And, and it has maybe helped grow your profile a little bit out from what people would say, well, it's, it's, it's out there in Lubbock. It's a long way to go. But, man, people seem to be enthusiastic when they're there. They, they are. I think if you watched the game Monday night, uh, you saw that. Uh, the place was jammed. It was loud. Uh, every school is proud of their game day experience, Paul, but we have we, we take a back seat to no one. Now, I really don't know what you're referring to when you keep saying out there in Lubbock. I mean, <laughs> yeah. uh, we have uh, a fine airport. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> but I admit, people just don't wander through Lubbock. They have to be intentional about getting there. But uh, that's what Lubbock I meant. Is, <laughs> that's what <laughs> well, um, Brett was here in town for the Kansas uh, uh, two weeks, a week ago Sunday maybe, or the week before we announced for the Kansas State Lady Raiders game, and I picked him up at the airport and he came up to my home and we visited and we drove through campus. Uh, he, like so many others, marvel at what a beautiful place this is. And so there's a lot of things going well for Tech. And I say number one thing is our fan base. We have the greatest fans. I can, uh, I can quantify that, but I won't get into the details. <laughs> it's just not my impression. <laughs> <laughs> going back to, to the Oklahoma-Texas situation from a couple of years ago, I know that they'd have to give 18 months notice whenever they were planning on, on actually doing That's a, a bit of a, a question. And maybe you guys have had that answered in the time since, but – had that not broken the way that it did, as far in advance, however far that was, in theory, do you think the conference would have been able to move as quickly had it happened 10 months later? And do you think you guys would have been able to to make it whole with the four schools that you did or some other arrangement? Or would that story not breaking have put you up against the wall to the point where maybe there wasn't a pivot that was available like yeah. it was two summers ago? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, who could have foreseen that UCLA and USC were going to leave as they did? Mm-hmm. And I uh, I think by having knowledge of where we were so far in advance, it helped us add the schools we wanted. Uh, and I think that's more of a uh, – yeah, so there's going to be some challenges for anybody else right now to get those quality of schools. Um, you know, the issue about – when a, a school leaves, um, the bylaws basically, there's an agreement that says you owe two years of distribution. Um, and that was, so one of the issues in, in this settlement was that um, we didn't really go that route. Uh, when, what Oklahoma and Texas gave up was that foregone revenue they would have received had they stayed in the league. And the dilution they contributed to for our new members. And so there, there are many options as the way the settlement could have been uh, reached. And part of, I think, the brilliance of what Brett did was to find the path that got us to a decision. And, um, and in the end, uh, Oklahoma and Texas worked with us very well. And um, there was a lot of bitterness, you know, months back. But I think this next year, it, it's a chance to kind of memorialize their exit from the conference. And I think uh, that's going to be interesting and fun. And, and in the end, I think we all left feeling pretty good about each other. Will you play Texas once they leave the conference in football? Well, we'd like to. Uh, I'm not the person that would, you know, that's something that Kirby and the ADs will work on. Uh, uh, you know, they'll work on. I know many people in uh, the Red Raiders want to see that. I want to see it. And I guarantee you, we'll try to do that. It would, um, 
it, it would be kind of, I, I couldn't say right now how and when that's going to happen, but that's important to us. That rivalry means a lot. And, you know, this year, um, it was sort of ironic that the, um, it's the first time we've ever beaten OU and Texas in the same year. We hate to lose those wins by them coming off the schedule. <laughs> Fair play. Man, you've got some really good zingers in there, and, and, it's, and it's, we appreciate your time. I, I want to get into Joey McGuire. The football team ended oh. the season strong, had the 8-5, and five, and obviously we know Joey from his time, well, in high school around Dallas, and then, of course, his time at Baylor as well. The first time you met him, did you real, did you know then that he was the one you wanted? Yes. We, we interviewed him in Baylor, I mean, in Waco. And uh, uh, it, was a, it was love at first sight. <laughs> Although we had a lot of prior knowledge uh, of Coach McGuire. Um, he, he right now, I would venture to say he's the most popular person in Lubbock. <laughs> And, and, and the Raider Nation, uh, with justifiable reasons. Um, the way they finished the season, uh, the way he's recruited, but it's but also it's the way it's it's him and that coaching staff. They get it. They he fits at Tech. He fits in West Texas. People, uh, Red Raiders, identify with his character, his love for this. Cool. And we feel very, very fortunate to have him here. And uh, um, I, I went to an event last, I think it was Friday. He was hosting a fantasy camp for these gentlemen that support the football program. And they have a couple days with some of the coaching staff. If you watch him, the way he navigates those situations, the way he can communicate, he has, of course, he's a great coach, but he knows how to run and he has CEO skills that are so important for a head coach these days, especially in this world of NIL and all that other stuff. Do you ever, like when you're having maybe a sluggish morning, just give them a call for a quick, like, five-minute pep talk? Well, uh, I don't want to bother him. He's very busy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the thing about Joey is he's the same guy today as he was the day we met him. He will talk to everybody. I think what people love about him is how authentic he is. And he loves those players, and they can tell it. Uh, and he loves his staff. Um, we're, we're darn lucky to have Joey McGuire and Debbie here. Dr. Scavano, we know that uh, the, the Big 12 has their new TV deal. The Texas OU exit has been completed and all of that. And now looking forward, do you have a chance while you're in those meetings, presidents, et cetera, that – the Big 12 teams are committed to the Big 12 because you hear about what might be happening with the Pac-12. You hear about the future of other conferences. And is the Big 12 committed to each other? Is that something that you have to worry about down the road? No, I don't worry about that. Um, this league, uh, there's a cultural similarity among all these schools. Uh, the presidents and chancellors like each other. And... Um, you might say I'm naive, and I think that matters, but I think it does. Uh, and so um, we like where we are. The four new members were great additions. I think that's why we're going to be very thoughtful in how we expand in order to maintain that culture that's important. And Brett has some great marketing ideas. So, guys, I would say just, you know, pay attention because uh, he's just started. In fact, that was my last question. Is there going to be some revenue flow, stream, extra cash in hand with ideas that some of us may not even know exist right now, but he knows the future that well? Yeah, yeah he's, uh, he's always looking at things like that. And um, um, he has ideas, you know, and I don't want to like spill the beans here, but he's talked about international engagement. Um, where do we hold our uh, events to announce the beginning of a season, be in the mark, be in the cities with the big, biggest market impact. Of course, Dallas has been good to us, but there are other things he's looking at. So he has a host of ideas. You ought to get him on the show someday, I'll, and let, I'll let him speak for himself. Yeah, we've, we've had him a couple of different times. Look forward to him again now that the exit agreement has been reached, and we'll have him on this show very soon. 
Dr. Skavonik, thanks for your time. We pro uh, appreciate it. I know you're busy. Great having you on the show. Good luck with the men's basketball team as they try to close it out with some more wins after, as you mentioned, you. a pretty nice little stretch against Kansas State and Texas. We appreciate it. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, too. you guys. Dr. Bye -bye. Lawrence, you too. Dr. Lawrence Skuvanek with us on 365 Sports on many things, not Texas Tech.